Are you a casual gamer just looking for a chill game to play? Perhaps something that can run on your aging PC or terrible gaming laptop. Maybe you are a little antisocial and don't want to play with other people, but you still want to enjoy a little bit of storytelling and maybe get some feelings in your heart. Well, look no further, because I have just the game for you. Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. And if it's not enough, there are two of them. But I'm not a Star Wars fan. You do not need to worry about lore at all, my friend, because it takes place 4,000 years and is completely unrelated to the movies at all. So you can just jump right in and enjoy yourself. And if that doesn't convince you enough, perhaps you could sit through this video and understand why Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic is the game suited for you. Knights of the Old Republic 1 and 2 are readily available on many platforms. You can easily get a copy of Steam and run it on almost any computer. And if it suits you, perhaps you could even buy one from Google Play Store or Apple Play Store and run it on your mobile phone to play it on the go. Being a rather old game that's almost two decades old, I don't think you can give the excuse that you are unable to play the game just because your electronic devices are not compatible. Since you are basically telling me that you have a computer running on Windows 95. If you are unwilling to pay the cost of the game, which is only like 10 bucks now, then you can probably wait for a sale or something in the future, since you will get it dirt cheap. I know some of our Nintendo Switch fellas have suffered a lot before the lives have been fed, but nonetheless, KOTOR still remains one of the games which you can run on almost any system. And the second reason I would normally give is that it has a good amount of replayability. Being an RPG, Knights of the Old Republic gives you a quite a good run of the game, not just once, but at least a few times. This comes in the form of character customization and dialogue options. For character customization, you can start off playing as a male character with a very specific build of let's say a soldier or a Jedi Guardian, or perhaps you want to mix things up and be a scoundrel, then a Jedi Sentinel. It's up to you, but those character customization options would vastly change how your gameplay experience will be. Will you brute force through every enemy horde by sheer strength? Or perhaps you want to use stealth to evade them. I'm not going to go into the details of the customization, but for me, I mostly play a Jedi Guardian class, where I normally just play like a hack and slash. In addition to how your playstyle in combat is, you can also have the dialogue options. Male and female, light side, dark side, and neutral options. Whether in your side quest or in the main storyline, you will have a variety of different options to choose from and will result in different consequences to each plot. And of course, your romance options will be vastly different here as well, cause male and female. Anyways, if that's not enough for you, then you should probably install some mods from Deadly Stream or Nexus mods to help spice out your gameplay and role-playing experience even more. I think another compelling reason is the memorable story and companions we have. While the gameplay itself, though a very aged combat system that may not quite appeal to you, perhaps the story and companions can. There's a reason why this game still has many people coming back to it, even after almost two decades. Since we have after all grown to love the story and the characters themselves, Knights of the Old Republic 1 is a classic Star Wars adventure, while Knights of the Old Republic 2 adds a darker and deeper twist to it. Both these games do make you ponder and wonder more at the end of it. I'm not going to post any spoilers here, but what I will say is that through these games, you have so many opportunities to see your companions grow into something better. These characters all come from different walks of life, with their own respective problems and issues from the get-go, in the past that they haven't dealt with. And you will be able to bear witness to these life training moments that they experience, no matter how insignificant. Personally. I think it's worth those hours that you spend sitting down and listening to their dialogue and stories. Some of their voices are honestly the best as well, especially this guy. He has a voice really well suited for ASMR. General, is there a reason you don't carry a lightsaber anymore? And of course, the next reason why Knights of the Republic is such a good game is that it has good world building planets and scenery. It definitely sets itself apart from normal Star Wars. Knights of the Old Republic doesn't just confine you to one planet, you actually get to visit a variety of different environments, each with their own unique culture, scenery and ambience. The green fields of Dantooine and the eerie tunes of the Sith Lords on Korriban. There is much for you to explore. These planets are not just for show, and the game does a good job explaining and setting the precedence for why each and every planet 
has its own unique quirks and politics, which is definitely something you should be looking for in a game. I think an underrated thing about KOTOR is that we also have a community and good support. While it's not an online game, KOTOR has one of the largest communities out there. You have channels on YouTube doing Let's Plays, discussing philosophy and lore, or just talking about different character builds and stuff, all dedicated to this HO game. If you ever feel lost or unsure of how to get started with the game, or perhaps you want to talk to some people about this game that you have grown to love, the Reddit community is one of the most active ones out there, with over 100,000 members. Your questions and your threats would surely have engagement. If you feel that Reddit is toxic, perhaps you could also visit the dedicated Discord server in the KOTO community. I believe the KOTO subreddit is still one of the more civil ones out there, but I'll just leave it up to you. And let's not forget the superb models out there who dedicate their time to building mods and actually releasing it for other KOTO players to play with as well. And I think the last and final reason would be the philosophy and lore in this game. Being ultimately still connected to Star Wars lore in a sense, this game expands a lot upon the nuances and deep dives into the core philosophy of Star Wars as a whole. It has produced notable characters like Kraya and Revan, who aren't just your typical Force users. Their motivations and their reasons for being who they are. These things are just some things that you can't find outside of Knights of the Republic. There's just so many things that you can learn from the small things you do in this game and the dialogue option that each companion has. The game in fact teaches us and makes us question many things in its own unique way through the black story and plot, which makes the games far more meaningful than just a bunch of pixels and computer code because it actually makes us think and ponder about the world around us as we consider the philosophies the teachings of each character. All in all, I would say that that is one of the biggest appeal of Knights of the Old Republic. And there you have it. These are my reasons why you should play Knights of the Old Republic if you haven't. And if you're interested in more KOTOR content or maybe some Star Wars AI content, I do a bunch of those videos. So do check out the rest of my channel. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, do drop a like. Thanks for watching and may the force be with you.